today. And um, so among people that sail, it seems to be a thing that no matter what type of boat they have, uh, if they're doing work on their boat, fixing it up, uh, they make videos about it. And those videos are actually pretty enjoyable. We recently acquired a um, Boston Whaler Harpoon 5.2 sailboat from a very kindly gentleman um, who gave it to us, basically gave it to us, and we gave him $500, but, um, but there were also some repairs necessary to the boat. And I told him, I, you know, I really appreciate this offer. It's extremely generous, but, um, you know, my wife had put the law, laid down the law about taking on, uh, buying something that wasn't saleable and that we would have to spend a lot of time working on. And he totally understood. He said, well, how about you and I work on it together and then you can buy it from me on the cheap, cheap. So that's what we did. And he's been really helpful. And after a certain amount of time, it was apparent that the project was going too slow. And so I said, well, you know, why don't you just here, take my money, hand me the title and, and I'll work on it at my pace. And he's like, that's great. Um, Cause you're a lot better at getting things done than I am. And so I've taken it over and now um, there's three pieces of repair that needed to happen and then it will be ready to sail, hopefully by next weekend. And those three things were that the centerboard needed to be put back up into the middle of the boat where it is, it's a fixed centerboard. Sorry. You can take it out relatively easily to repair it, but in order to put it back, you need to get it up on a crane or a hoist and screw in some brass plates. And so the centerboard needed to be replaced, not, not replaced, but reinstalled. There was a hole punched in the side that had been fixed with fiberglass and that needed to be gel coated and finished, which I'm doing started yesterday. And then what else needed to happen? It needs a motor and a mount. Here at the, um, at the yacht club and we have to wear masks. It is hot as all hell. I guess it's about 95 degrees right now or more, but I wanted to show you all the boat that we bought. See the trailer is really beautiful. And um, I've got it covered with a tarp. I don't want to take the tarp off, but um, here's where I'm working. It's a, uh, this is a Boston Whaler Harpoon 5.2. 5.2 meters, which is, I think, 17 and a half feet. And um, let's look under the tarp and I'll show you what needs to happen here. You can see here that there's a center console, a wooden piece. The wooden piece that is similar to this one, it's in the car. I have it off. Those, that block right there with the two pulleys, that block takes two ropes that control the center board. The center board is back here it's uninstalled and it was taken out geez I, I forget why but uh, it was taken out by the prior owner and um, he was gonna help me put it back in but I kind of pushed instead to just sell me the boat and I'd figure it out so that was my decision however while it's out I'm taking that opportunity to coat this with gel coat as I do this patch right here. Now yesterday I put a coat of gel coat on here and I used a roller. I used a roller from Home Depot that came in a cheap kit and that roller unfortunately this is not an issue because I was going to sand it anyway and put another coat but you can see that roller left these little fibers in the gel coat and gel coat is epoxy so now those fibers uh they're not just like dried in paint they're dried in epoxy but it doesn't really matter because i'm going to sand it down and um, i'm pretty sure they'll just go away i bought an orbital sander that is cordless so that i can work out here 
where I don't have any electrical power. So I'm going to get to work. I'm going to put the camera on a tripod. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put another coat of gel coat on that patch and another coat on the center board there. So here I go. One of the challenges that working with gel coat, there's two challenges with working with gel coat in this weather. One is that even when I put the exact appropriate amount of um, catalyst into the gel coat mix, you know, it's an epoxy, so you have to mix two parts together. No matter if I put the right amount or not, because of the temperature, it's going to harden faster than it should. If I don't put enough, it may stay, it may take too long to harden or just not harden correctly. So I got to work quickly. The other thing is, believe it or not, I, I guess maybe it's just me, I sweat a lot. And yesterday, it was really difficult for me to mix my um, gel coat and keep sweat from dropping either before I put the gel coat or after I put the gel coat and started mixing into the cup and the pan. It was really hard for me to work and not have sweat drip off and drip into the gel coat and that's the last thing I want oils and sweat for my skin mixed in this chemical compound that I'm gonna rely on to protect the boat so it's not a big deal because this is already I'm just putting a finishing coat on so anyway now I have to sand excuse me <sighs> going to wipe down what I just did with some uh, acetone just to make sure there's no dust there when I lay down the uh, the clear coat the uh, gel coat okay. oh boy ah oh, shit okay we have a problem here but this may be a good thing yeah this is a good thing the acetone the acetone is pulling off those lumps of fibers that were left by the yeah it's pulling them off this is a good thing and it's not pulling off all the uh gel coat i laid down it seems to be just pulling off the clumps of the uh, fibers from the roller that I used. Apparently, yeah, I get it now. The fibers, the fibers dissolve in the acetone, but the gel coat doesn't. So when those fibers get hit with the acetone, they come apart and they pull off, but it leaves behind most of the gel coat. So that might be a good thing. I'm going to sand it a little bit more and then do that again. how great it feels to put on rubber gloves here in the heat it's 95 degrees out here and humid I have sweat dripping in my glasses and in my eyes and I got to put on rubber gloves I'll show you when I'm done these rubber gloves are going to be filled with water that sweat from my hands glasses right now are filled with sweat. Oh, that sucks. Unfortunately, because this is gel coat, it 
I uh, leave it in the lip here or drip it someplace, it will never harden and dry. It'll just remain some sticky goop because it doesn't have catalyst in it yet. When I'm done here, the stuff in the cup will have a catalyst in it that will cause it to harden and cure within about two hours. So I have to carefully measure it. I've done this a couple times already. Nine. Ten. So that's approximately two ounces. Sixty milliliters. So now I need to wipe this and dump it. I brought some knee pads. If I don't clean that up, it's just going to stay there forever gooey and sticky. And it will get on other things in my workspace. Now, catalyst. Sit down here when I do this. <sighs> I need between six and eight, six to eight drops for two ounces. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna go with nine. It has to be mixed super thoroughly. If you don't mix it thoroughly, you'll have parts that harden quickly and parts that don't harden at all or that take way too long. So, so far, so good. It's easy to do this wrong. And I'm not gonna brag yet because in a minute or two I may spill it all over the place which would be such a disaster. You know it's easy to see that the part in the middle of the cup is mixed. The liquid at the bottom but the, the sides have gel coat on them that hasn't been mixed. So that's the danger area because that could get on the brush. I don't want to propagate gel coat on the side but at the same time I don't want to leave it there uncured because it'll get on the brush and it'll get in my work area and in, in my work. So, all right, here's my brush. Today I'm not going to use a roller, I'm just going to use the brush. I may or may not try to salvage the brush. And you know what? This is really comfortable right here and I can reach all my work area. So, I'm just going to sit here. I'm probably going to get gel coat on me, but that's okay. I'm going to brush it on and I don't really care too much about brush strokes because I'm going to sand it again and put another coat later on. Sometime in the future I'll worry about brush strokes, but that's not today. Ah, dripping. Okay. Yeah, this painting heads up like this might not be a good idea. You know what, this patch is about done. I don't, I don't need it to look any better than this. You know what I mean? What I needed was for it not to leak. I'm not sure I really care about these clumps. I really am not sure, but I'm gonna try and fill them in anyway give it the old college try but if it doesn't work who cares really you know now the centerboard edge I'm gonna do the other side first here there's clumps on here but that's not from me yesterday that was there already that's clumps of I don't know some polyurethane varnish and I don't really even care if that interferes with the gel coat because this is just sort of a superfluous coating to, I don't know, smooth out the centerboard. 
I'm not really sure. I'm just really just practicing and using uh, practicing using gel coat in different sorts of circumstances here. This gel coat's already hardening up. I can feel it. It's already setting up. What's it been like? Three minutes. I guess I put maybe a little too much catalyst in there. But you know what? I'm liking this. I'm pretty happy with how this here is looking. I just covered some divots that were in this center board from being mishandled or bumped against screws and things like that. I just covered them up and they look much better now. So it looks smoother than it did yesterday before I started this part. Some stains I'm covering up, some scratch marks where the paint was worn away, and I just got gel coat on my knee. Yeah, there's rust stains here and stuff that now I can cover up. I didn't sand it. Do I care if the gel coat peels off in a year or two? No, I don't care. So there you go. I just hope it's completely cured by tomorrow and I'm using as much of it as I can just to exhaust what I mixed and not waste it. There we go. I think that's as good as I want it to be. I'm going to put that down and before this hardens up, I'm going to, I'm going to rinse this brush. And I'm done here for today.